Hey, what's up, YouTube? Spidey Fan Views here. Today, I got my comic book reviews. This week, I finally picked up my copy of Thanos Rising number one. Uh, we got some G.I. Joe number three, Scarlet Spider 16, Ultimate Spidey issue 22, FF number six, and Guardians of the Galaxy number two. So, let's start it off with Thanos Rising. Because that's the one you guys have been waiting to see. And I've been waiting to read. So this is, you know, all, as all you guys know, this is the origin story of Thanos. This is how he became the villain that he is. And I think this was a really good uh, issue, you know. It had really good art. I, I mean, Jason Aaron's writing it, so that's a, that's a win. This is an amazing splash page here. This is some great art. I just really like the artwork. I like the story. It's kind of sad. You know, how his mom tries to kill him, and how he's, I kind of feel, you know, you really feel bad for Thanos. And I think with a comic book like this, and a character like Thanos, that's what you gotta do for the first issues. You gotta, you gotta make the character, or the bad guy, you know, seem, um, you gotta make, you gotta feel bad for him, you know. That's why he became the villain he is, and it, overall I thought it was really entertaining. I really liked it, and I've always really liked Thanos as a character. He's just one of my favorite Marvel villains. It's really been something just really cool about him, you know? Uh, I don't know what it is, but he's just probably one of my favorite villains of all time. I'm just going to rate this one now because this one came out, what, two, three weeks ago? So I'd give this a four and a half out of five. Definitely willing to check out the second issue, and I'm definitely excited for this series. Um, what should we review? Uh, let's talk about this one. G.I. Joe number three. Uh, I gotta say, from what I hear, um, that this is not like, a, this is more about Duke. Um, well, this issue is more about Duke, but I'm, I'm not sure about what this series is. Like, is this just a G.I. Joe series about Duke, or is this a G.I. Joe series about the whole team? I'm, I'm kind of wondering on that, but this was pretty good. I liked it. It's kind of like the same art style as the G.I. Joe Renegades cartoon. And that was a pretty good looking cartoon, I mean, and it was a bad show. Not Renegades, Resolute. No, no. Yeah, Resolute. Um, I'm pretty sure. I really like this, um, first of all, I just want to say, I thought it was cool how they have G uh, Duke as a kid playing with original G.I. Joes, because I have those. Um... But this, this issue is pretty much just a strictly Duke. It's all Duke. It's pretty entertaining. There's some action. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty decent. I recommend you guys check it out. It's it's all right. I, I liked it. Next up, we have Guardians of the Galaxy number two. This was entertaining and this was a lot of fun. Uh, McNiven's art looks beautiful. Bendis's writing is really good. Probably the best part of the issue was Rock Raccoon. Rock Raccoon is this issue. He has great dialogue, the action. Right here, where they talk about why they've shut down, um, what is it? Are, are not allowing uh, other people to, or other, um, are allowing aliens or to go on Earth or other races or species or whatever. Like, you know, the Kree. Like, pretty much Earth has been shut down for all galactic heroes and all that. Um, and this is just talking about why that happened, why Star's dad did that. They sent down this alien race, frickin' I forget what it is, or what their name is. Says it a billion times in the comic book, and I can't remember. And they have a little action fight scene, whatever, Iron Man and the Guardians. And this was really awesome, this part here. I really liked this scene. Like I said, Guardians has been awesome. Rocket Raccoon's the best part of this issue. And, of course, in the end... They send down uh, the Spodax, uh, what are they called? Directive. They send them down to arrest Star Lord. That's the whole reason why. Because, well, they send the state come down to stop Star Lord because he broke the rule of no aliens on Earth, pretty much. Uh, I'm sorry if, it's pa if I'm pausing. Currently, it's it's annoying, I know, but 
We got FF. This was pretty good, basically. Um, what's her face? This chick here. What's her name? Ah, uh, crap. Now I gotta check it. What is her name? Damn it. What is her name? What is her name? What is her name? Uh, Dara? Is that her name? Darla. Darla is her name. That's her name. How did I forget that? And uh, she gets her phone hacked. And Bentley23 and Medusa are missing. She, well, she gets her phone hacked by the Yancey Street Gang, and they're giving it to this Daily Bugle reporter. And overall, it's just a lot of fun. I can't. It's kind of hard to explain these issues and make it sound cool because they're all very simple stories. Uh, and I like that about them, but I don't know. There's just there's something about it. You just can't really explain it. You just sort of have to read it yourself. The art looks good. Everything about this was really good, and I really like this one a lot. This one was close to being, you know, book of the week. Because this was so awesome. The cover, first of all, this this obviously does get cover of the week. This gets cover of the week, for sure. For sure, that's a sick cover. Uh, we get a nice battle with Miles and the Venom symbiote. We get, um, you know, some touching scenes. His mom pretty much dies, and then he says no more. And then we lead into the new story, Miles. He's done being Spider-Man, which probably won't last long, but whatever. This was an absolute home run. Bendis nailed it, man. Just hit it out of the park. Fantastic issue, man. I could not recommend this series anymore. Definitely buy this. This was awesome. I, I don't want to spoil anything. The battle was amazing. Uh, the art was amazing. The storytelling was amazing. The pacing was amazing. This, this mini event here was awesome, and yes, it, it is just a story arc, but I call it a mini event because it was that epic. Uh, this was absolutely all sorts of win in this issue, right here. How could you not be reading Ultimate Spider-Man? Definitely read Ultimate Spider-Man if you have not been reading it. Please, do yourself a favor, this, is bit, this was absolutely incredible. And my pick of the week was Scarlet Spider, number 16. I really like the cover, the Superior Spider number 1 throwback cover. This was... Just a lot of fun. Uh, we get to see what the note says. That was what I'd like to. What I'm gonna call it is the Die Hard issue of Spider. It was that Christmas special. I call it Die Hard, uh, Die Hard issue because it takes place on Christmas Eve, and it's a tower heist. So I, it's the Die Hard issue. But there was a note that was given by Madam Web. Everybody thought it was gonna be Madam Web telling Scarlet Spider that Doc Ock has taken, you know, over Peter Parker's body, and Scarlet Spider would have to stop him. That's not the case. This is what the note says. I'm not going to read it, but you know what? You can pause it. So that's what the note says there. And basically what happens is they go to a rodeo. They go to a rodeo. Um, and stuff just doesn't go their way. Where you have Armadillo. Uh, what's his name? This guy's name. I think it's Armadillo. Uh, yeah, Armadillo. And then Scarlet Spider has to save the day, but really Armadillo is not there to hurt people. He is just there because he wants his girlfriend back. Aw, so cute. And Scarlet Spider, you know, is there to save the day. Doesn't really do much, but he gets back together with his girlfriend in the end. This was a really spectacular issue. This is probably the best issue from, or not the best, second best from Scarlet Spider. Really enjoyed this comic of the week. 4.5 out of 5, um, you know, I can't really confirm it as Comic of the Week, because I might change with this, because this was absolutely phenomenal. This, these two could differ, really, they could change. Uh, so 4.5 out of 5, another, you know, 4.5 out of 5. I give this 4.5 out of 5, too. Same with this, 4.5, and I'd give this a 3.5. I really want to know what you guys thought of the comics this week. Um, I know the review wasn't you know, as long as they normally are, but I guess you know, that's a good thing, I'm trying to shorten them down a bit. I really want to know what you guys thought of these two, and, you know, and this one too, because this was probably the flagship, or the, the big title that came out this week. Um, but once again, if you are not reading Ultimate Spider-Man, you really have to, and you know, it differs, really, I, I can't confirm it, I think I already said, yeah, I already said that, you retoed. Oh, I'm so stupid. Okay, anyways, um, Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great week. I have a lot of videos that I want to get done. I really want to review J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, the first one.
I want to review Arkham City. I got to review the Bleeding Edge Armor Iron Man from Hasbro, the figure. And I want to review Battlefield Bad Company too, because um, I'm getting hyped about Battlefield. So anyways, I will see you guys later. Um, probably maybe tomorrow or the day after, because I really want to get those videos done. I have it all written down here. And, oh, that's what I'm forgetting. I wanted to show you guys something I picked up real quick. I picked up some older comic books. I picked up Tales of Suspense, issue 18. This is missing the co the front cover and the back cover. This is taped on. But I also got Silver Surfer, issue 5. Uh, and I'm really proud of these two issues that I picked up because they're, they're good issues. I mean, 60, Silver Age, 60 fun. Silver Age, 60s nostalgia is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, I'm going on. I'm talking a bit too much. Peace out. And, yeah, bye.